Hey, it's Amethyst Virgo. I'm here with your pick a card soulmate reading. Who is my soulmate right now? The energy around me and my soulmate. Is my soulmate a romantic connection? So while I'm speaking, zoom in on which stone is drawing you in. I've picked a set of cards for each stone. Alright, so pick one or fast forward to the part that is the color of your stone. I have the timestamps below. So quickly, I just want to share, you know, some of you may already be aware. Soulmate situation does not mean that you are always romantically linked to this person. Sometimes it could be a family member or it could be a friendship. So I just want to make that clear. Soulmate relationships do not mean they also last forever. There is no expiration date to relationships. Well, you know, this isn't <laughs> like the episode of Black Mirror. You know, so there is no guarantee just because someone is your soulmate or your twin flame or karmic relationship partner whatever your situation is it's going to last forever and i just want to make that clear because people do have free will all right all right so i'm going to now take these away and read the cards for each stone so the first one this is the first set all right so the first card is the person's role in your life so far Page of Wands. This person may have been coming in and out of your life, but it's like they always show up. So there can be periods of time where you don't see them, but then they just show up out of nowhere. Or they are very impulsive maybe, you know, in regards to their communication with you, but there's a, there's a little bit of a fiery connection between you and this person or a very close one because we have Wands which deal with action. Their energy. Cancer. So though this person could potentially, in your life, they may have kind of been in and out. There's not like a lot of consistency. This is picking up on the energy of the person. Now this could mean that this is their sign, their sun sign, their moon sign, their rising, or simply just means a person because of their chart and the combination of, combination of influences. This person comes off with a lot of cancer energy. This person is caring and nurturing. They're always there for you when you need them, even though they might not seem that consistent. This person may also... There's a real connection there. This person values real connections with people. There are other signs that they might socialize a lot, but they're not really in depth. You know what I mean? They don't really get to know people. Cancer energy wants to actually get to know you. They actually want to care about you. It's not just, hey, I just want to talk to you and have a conversation. They actually want to understand you better so that they can, you know, use that to actually have real authentic connections. So this person, you know... They value real, authentic connections between people. They also could be somewhat, you know, kind of want their way a lot, this person. Is this a romantic relationship? No. So for some of you, this could mean a family member. Maybe it's a family member that you don't see often, but someone that, you know, you feel very close to. It could be a friend. This is not a romantic soulmate relationship. So if this is resonating with you, whoever your soulmate connection is right now, it's not, it's not romantic. Now, I also want to be clear that um, a soulmate can change. You can have a soulmate that you don't speak to anymore. You know, I have a soulmate connection. This is not romantic. It's not romantic at all. Um, but, you know, I don't really talk to this person at this point in life. But there's always been a connection there, right? So, all right. The lover's card, though. So, by lover's card, it means, you know, this could being that there's a connection to this person you're drawn to this person you have a lot in common you always come back together and have a good time together if it is a non-romantic relationship because it said no it's not romantic it's not soulmate or romantic soulmate it just means that you two have a lot in common you bond over common influences this person kind of comes in and out of your life but you have a lot of things that draw you two together when you do finally see each other your lives might mirror each other in some way Okay, for those where your soulmate is, it's not a romantic relationship. It could mean that you had a romantic relationship at one point with this person, but you know that's really not going to work. You know that you might be better off as friends. And the last card to round this out is Saturn in Aquarius, eccentricity. Okay, so Saturn actually is one of the planets that rules Aquarius, and Aquarius is a sign known for its, you know, its ability to really reason and logic. And its ability to also be somewhat of a game changer. So it's a very interesting sign because of just all the duality that rules it. And so your situation with this person, it's never going to be normal. It's never going to be normal. It's never going to follow this kind of rule of what a friendship or, you know, a relationship 
and I'm, by relationship I just mean whatever the connection is you have with this person I don't necessarily mean romantic because the cards said for you this is not a romantic one it's always going to be weird it's always going to be in and out it's always going to be this person's maybe not, you know not consistent in your life but there's always going to be some type of connection that draws you two together because of a common understanding all right so if you pick this stone all right king of wands the role this person plays in your life is pretty strong this person has a very heavy influence on your life you know they might encourage you to go out and do a lot of different things that you normally wouldn't do this person might bring a lot of fun or you know or you know ambitious like behavior to your life because wands deal with action we have the king who's very accomplished very dynamic maybe popular people know who this person is so this person brings you like you might admire this person a little bit you might look up to this person a little bit you might trust their guidance of what to do next you know there's there's a lot of energy going on the role this person plays in your life now the energy of this person is interestingly enough capricorn so though wands are related to fire signs again this is the role they've played in your life this is more so the type of person they are or the energy of this person so we're getting capricorn energy capricorn is a very industrious sign that cares about goals and ambition and sometimes can be a little bit calculated and come off as cold because they care so much about the outcome that they're not really concerned about feelings and and things of that nature now capricorn um this does not mean this person is a capricorn though for some of you it, it may mean that it just means this person could have capricorn influences in their chart if this is how the type this is the type of person that they are they're very very um established this person is established i'm getting especially with the king of wands this person is established this person is very mature this person you know wants you to do your best you know and sometimes you might get annoyed with them because they might kind of seem to you overbearing you know king of wands can be dominating you know wands is action i think of action i also think it influences like mars and from you know in fire signs capricorn can be very fatherly very paternalistic so this person might give you a lot of advice or want you to go a certain way all the time. Now, is this a romantic possible situation? Again, I want to be clear also that this can be a reading for a male or a female. So if you're some, you know, if you're dating a a you know a female and you're like, hey, why is this show a king? It's just the, the role they play does not mean this person is a king or is a male. All right. So again, if you need, if you think a situation resonates with you, but it's not in depth enough, you you know contact me for a personal reading because it might just be that you need a personal reading about your situation all right is this a potential romantic soulmate yes not a family member not a friend this is a potential romantic soulmate situation so i'm giving the yes card next card is going to give a little bit more clarity about the yes a little bit more clarity about your situation the fool there's still a lot for you to do i feel like it's you though i feel like it's you have a lot to learn I feel like this romantic relationship, if it started or if it's about to start, could potentially help you grow. I think this person is more established than you, this person is older than you, or this person has just, they have a different understanding about certain things in life than you do. The Fool card, a new journey, a new beginning, being naive, being very green. I think it's relating to you. I don't think it's relating to the other person. I think that you're on a new journey of discovery by being in a relationship with this person. And you're going to learn a lot from this person. Even if sometimes you feel like they're kind of trying to tell you what to do. As long as this person isn't abusive, abusive or things like that, you can learn a lot from this individual. The last card here. You know what I find so interesting? So I shuffled all these cards. As you see, I'm using five different decks. I shuffled them thoroughly. And I'm seeing so many energetic patterns. Saturn shows up again. Saturn rules Capricorn. Saturn is the sign of the father, discipline, structure. You got a king here. Yeah, this person has a lot of this is a lot of strong energy with this uh, this soulmate person that you have going on here. Saturn and Leo. Saturn and Leo is not the easiest placement because Leo likes the sun. Leo is ruled by the sun. Saturn is a planet that is very much about structure, but also it can be very oppressive. I mean, the Saturn can teach you a lot of harsh lessons. So there is a lot for you two to learn. We have competing interests here. Leo, the sun. I think it's more so, this is kind of relating to you. You're younger than this person or you're more expressive. You're more, you know, more about fun or more about just having fun, letting loose, just going with the flow. 
they're more about structure. I think you two can make it work if you learn. This person might have to learn to let you have your own way sometimes. Meaning they might have to realize that even though they might know a little bit more than you, that they got to let you discover things on your own. You also have to know Leo energy can be stubborn. Leo energy likes to shine, but Leo energy also thinks they know what's best. Leo is a fixed sign. You also, so the way I'm doing this reading, guys, is very different than I would for another reading. I'm combining the elements of Saturn and Leo for this particular reading, okay? Um, Leo, you have to learn how to listen sometimes. Leo's fixed energy. You have to learn that sometimes this person might know best for you, okay? Um, the situation can work out in both of your favor and be, it can be a generosity. It can be a mutual relationship if you two learn to balance each other out. All right, next. This one. Pick this one. Knight of Cups. Okay. Charming. The role this person has played so far, they are alluring. This person is very charming. You like them. They also know, they're very maybe flirtatious. A lot of people might be drawn to them. There's something about this person that makes you want to chase them or makes you want to be with them. You know, they're kind of lighthearted. They're very, you know, you, you, sometimes it's hard to know where they actually stand, though. It's kind of hard sometimes. But this person maybe is also making it very clear that they like you or they're interested in you. They're not really playing games, but you also might be a little unclear sometimes, right? And so let's get the energy of this person's sign or this person's energy, perhaps. So Sagittarius energy. Okay, that's very interesting because I just said that this person can sometimes come across like you're not really sure what they want. Sagittarius energy can be like that. Sagittarius energy can be scattered. Saturn, Sagittarius, did I say Saturn? Sagittarius energy. Sagittarius is the most philosophical and intellectual of the fire signs. However, Sagittarius is mutable fire, which means sometimes Saturn, is sat why do I keep saying Saturn, y'all? Sagittarius is not always focused. It's not, Sagittarius energy is not always focused on what it needs to do. It's a lot of different ideas going on, a lot of different, you know, possible things they want to do. And so sometimes they can come across that way in regards to your, you know, your attraction or your, your relationship with them if it's not a romantic soulmate situation. At the same time, this person, you know, they, they push you to think deeper. This person, you know, though at times it could be maybe, it's not as concentrated energy. They can sometimes be trying to do a lot at one time. At the same time, they push your thinking. Sagittarius can be very thoughtful about how to change things in a more positive way very forward thinking the pioneering thinking philosophical just what is right what should we do to better something okay and so Sagittarius Sagittarius person energy whether they are Sagittarius or it's just in their chart you're attracted to that you're, you might like that you like that they're a person who's always trying to figure things out in a way to better expand something they're about expansion okay now, is this a possible romantic situation in the near future? You might not even be thinking about this person in a romantic way. In the near future, you or this person could develop feelings for each other in a way that is more romantic. Okay? And right now, you like them. You're attracted to them. But it, it's like they're hard to track down. They're hard to tame. They're hard to pin down. Let me get another card to give some further clarification. All right. Two of Cups is a really, really good sign. Two of Cups is about romance and partnership. And, you know, from one idea coming together, now people coming together to be in a relationship or partnership. Ace of Cups is the beginning of that. Two of Cups is when it's actually formalized, right? And so this is a positive indicator if you pick this set of cards that you and this person could potentially be a romantic relationship, you know, in the near future when things match up for both of you. And the last card to round your reading out is... Jupiter in Aries. Okay, so you know, there's a lot going on. It's a lot of fiery, fiery energy in this situation with you and your soulmate. One is romantic, two, there's some Sagittarius energy going on there. Now we have Aries. Jupiter is about expanding. Jupiter rules Sagittarius, okay? And Jupiter is about luck. D Jupiter is also about teaching and, and, and moving forward and, and giving information, shedding light on things, making things happen. Jupiter has a lot of different meanings. But then we have Aries. Aries is the pioneer, um, you know, Sagittarius is the pioneer of thought in fire signs. Aries is the pioneer of action in fire signs. And so Aries energy is independent. Let's do this. Let's go. Let's, let's, let's see what it, has to, what it has to offer. 
one person in your relationship might be more of the leader okay but at the same time i feel like both of you will be vibing on the same frequency of seeing what the relationship has to offer it might this situation might open your mind up a little bit this person might challenge you a little bit to let go of being very rigid or very overly structured with certain aspects of your life and encourage you to have fun and explore a little bit more and to expand, not just stay close to what you're used to, but also expand your understandings about life and also how to, you know, let loose and just be fun, you know, and have fun in a relationship and open up and not be so afraid of relationship and afraid of commitment. All right. All right. Anchor card is move this over for you guys. All right, Knight of Swords. The role this person has played in your life, they're very, they challenge you mentally. They are maybe even very clever. They're a trickster. They're sarcastic. They always have something to say. You are more attracted to this person, and attracted doesn't have to mean it's a romantic situation. If this is not a romantic situation, ignore that part. But I simply mean this person is very witty. They make you think. They make you ponder things. They are always trying to, it seems like your, your conversations with them are always about something regarding like your mindset. It's about the way you guys communicate. This is the role this person has played so far. The energy that they have is Aries energy. This person is, could be very independent. Doesn't mean they are an Aries, but they're very independent. They're outspoken. They don't really mince their words. They can sometimes come across to you as like not as emotional as you want. Like It's almost like Aries energy can be very passionate, but not emotional, right? If you're a person that requires more emotion, that could be confusing to you at times. Like, wow, this person, I know they like me or I know they're interested in me, but they're not showing the emotion that I want. Okay. Now, is this a romantic situation? Reconsider. Okay. There is a lot that you need to think through right now in regards to the situation. So, what I'm seeing here first is, the first thing is like, Knight of Swords. This person is more so getting, you know, it's more so about the communication. This person is getting a lot of your communication or get a lot of your attention in regards to, like, how you think. All right? You're maybe not looking at this person in a really romantic way at this point in time. And then we have the Aries card, which is showing their energy. And then I get reconsider. Whatever it is that you were thinking about with this person in general, it think about it again. If you're thinking about, like, is this person your soulmate? If you have to think about it, there sometimes could be some questioning of, like, is this person really what you think they are? Are you forcing a connection? Are you trying too hard to make something a connection that it's really not? Let me get another card to give you some more information. So for this set, the next card that shows up is Ten of Cups, Success, Family. You might not be considering this person because you're turned off by certain things that they do or you're turned off by certain approaches they have to life. You might not always have the seat meet eye to eye. Reconsider for you I think is more so like you might have already dismissed this person as a possible romance. You probably clicked on this reading thinking about this person like oh but I don't think they're really for me like I don't think so let me just see what this reading says. For some of you, this person can be your actual soulmate. Just because a person doesn't show emotion the way that you want to doesn't mean they don't have the capacity to do that. But if you're not letting people in, of course they're not going to show the emotion or show the type of feelings that you want them to show. But this is a positive indicator. Ten of Cups is successful family, successful home, mutual feelings shared, about to move on to the next step. The last card for your reading is Sun and Aries independence but it's also about going for what you want ambitious and that adventure go for it try it for some of you i think this is saying like this person you should try to maybe open your mind to seeing if this is a path that you want to go to i think this is a positive indicator the fact that you got aries the fact that you got ten of cups the fact that you now have sun in aries which is dealing with independence but at the same time go for what you want go for what you want if you want this person, see if it is something that is going to make you happy. Um, you know, free will is 
definitely something that you should consider. Anytime you get a reading, understand that, yeah, there's certain things that are going to happen in your life no matter what you do. But at the same time, you do have free will. Okay? And so, for this card, I think it's basically saying, like, a lot of you have turned somebody off because there, there's something about them that doesn't match what you want. But if it's your soul is speaking and this person is on the same frequency and, vi you know, you're vibrating with this person and, you, you know, there it could be a positive outcome, especially with this Ten of Cups. All right, so last card set. All right. Oh, let me do this one. Sorry. Queen of Pentacles. All right, this person has been there for you a lot. This person has been there for you. This person maybe has helped you a lot financially. You know, for some of you, it could be saying, like, this is somebody who you have been tied to. Um, when I see Pentacles and I get this type of reading, sometimes I do think this is more so of a, could be more of a foundational relationship, family, acquaintance, some long-term friends, somebody of that nature. The Queen of Pentacles is showing, like, good luck, good fortune. So this person has maybe helped you a lot because they have a lot of resources. They have a lot to give to you, okay? All right. Now, the next part is their energy, Gemini energy. This person is very... Could be very talkative they know a lot of information you know they make you feel better because they are seem very curious about what's going on with you they seem very curious about your life they could sometimes you sometimes feel like they're not as stable as they they could be so though they've helped you out a lot you might also view them in general as a person who is you know has a lot to offer they're very smart they're very intelligent they're very social but at the same time it's hard to understand where they are it's hard to pin them down kind of like Sagittarius energy Sagittarius is mutable as well um, because they're all over the place. Sometimes they might change their mind very easily or they might change what they're doing very easily. And if you're a person who thrives off consistency, that can be a difficult, you know, type of person to deal with for you. Now, is this a romantic situation? There's something better. Okay. For some of you, I feel like you're trying to turn this into a romantic situation. But this is not really the person for you. Remember, soulmate situations can have cycles of time. You might always be connected to someone, but it doesn't mean you have to be with this person. You might learn something from this person, or you might always know that you could go to them if you need to, but it doesn't mean you always have to be in an actual physical relationship with this person. And so there's something better showing me. This is more of a romantic soulmate situation that you tried, but it's really not the end-all be-all to your actual emotional well-being to necessarily be with this individual. The next card is going to give some more insight to this, to there's something better. Yeah, this person is limiting you. Like, this situation here, it's almost like maybe you're trying to hold on to somebody that is hard to pin down. And you're relying on how they used to treat you. You know, I'm getting the Queen of Pentacles. Maybe they used to be there for you. They used to treat you well. There's something about them you like. Maybe this is a very stable person financially. This person is stable in some aspect of their life. But then there's some aspects of their life where they're not stable, where they're not consistent. Right? And the card's showing me there's something better for you. And maybe for them too. Maybe you're not for them either. And the Hangman card is limitations. Feeling restricted. Feeling like you can't really move on. Feeling like you can't break out and actually be free and feel, you know emancipated so for some of you it's like maybe you're trying to hold on to a situation because you're afraid of what else is out there okay the last card is going to round out your reading for this particular soulmate situation venus and libra indecision now, Venus and Libra is a very positive card in many aspects. I know it says indecision, but Venus rules Libra. Libra is about partnership. Libra is about balance and harmony. Okay? And so, when you look at the situation, if you look at the pattern of the cards, Venus and Libra is positive indicator, but I feel like in order for you to actually get that true romance that you want, it's shown that you might actually have to leave the situation right because you're indecisive you're not sure but you want something more than what this person has to offer but there's something better card is definitely telling you that there is some a more fulfilling connection with a different person you are restricted right now because you are afraid to leave the foundation of what you have Venus and Libra can be yours 
a true romance partnership that you feel happy about and fulfilled from can be yours. But you have to take the difficult move of restricting yourself from feeling limited. All right. All right. So if you like this video, please hit the like button. Also, if this video did not resonate with you, if you are still have, a, if you still have a lot of questions, go to my video number one, my soulmate reading, where it has a different set of cards that may resonate better with you. Remember, this was a general reading. All right. Thank you for watching.